It's been years since my guest today has been on Total Picture, and I'm really happy to have him back on the show. Donato DiOrio is the CEO of Ringlead, with primary responsibility of combining the team's technologies and vision of Ringlead and the company he founded called Broadlook Technologies. Welcome to an HR Technology Channel uh, edition of Total Picture. I'm Peter Clayton. Donato, thanks so much for joining me. It's great to have you back on the show. It is fun and always a pleasure. And I remember the first time we ever did this, and I was so new speaking in public or anything that I was really nervous. But now it's just now it's just fun. Now it's just fun. And, and as you can tell, Donato has a stand-up desk, which I think is very cool. Uh, so tell us a little bit, um, you know, uh, about the background and history of Broadlook, and and now you're the CEO of a company called Ringlead, and, and there was a merger that happened. So bring us up to date. Sure. So for many people out there, uh, you know, Broadlook's been around for a long time, uh, twelve plus, almost thirteen years now. And uh, my background was a software architect who then got thrust into recruiting and uh, ended up flourishing and liking it and building technology to help my own recruiting firm. So uh, in 2002, I took my two skills, which was the technology and the knowledge of recruiting, married them and founded Broadlook with my other two co-founders, Dan Hughes and Igor Fertankro. And basically, we pioneered the concept of real-time data mining. People thought we were crazy. Like, you're, so, you're crazy. Everything is SaaS. You have to put it in the cloud. And it's like, and you know, I, I heard from, from the CEOs of every major applicant tracking system, brilliant stuff, Donato, but it's not in the cloud. It, it can't scale. Well, when you look at the simple concepts of Moore's Law, right, that processors increase a certain amount every year, you know, I did the math and centrally crawling the internet on demand as a service was impossible when we founded Broadlook. You had to put it on a desktop. So I bided my time. In fact, if you think about it, our software was 10 to 11 years ahead of the, of the infrastructure, of the internet, of the processor and memory. So somewhere around 2009, I did the math and figured out, well, if in, you know, unless there's a major change, the technology that we built will, by 2012, 2013, be able to be centralized and we'll be able to run it as a service. So we started planning for that. That takes a major investment. So we needed to go out and find a investor. We found a great investor, uh, my partner, Ken Green, with Jericho Capital. And uh, he had another portfolio company called Ringlead. And Ringlead was the first Salesforce ISV. They were literally the first company out there that were in the Salesforce ecosystem. So when you want to get to the cloud, why not jump on the coattails of the fastest growing company out there in terms of in, in the billion scale? So we took our technology, the profiler, which we've sold to, to people for years in the desktop, and we re-architected it to basically run automated inside of Salesforce. So 10 years ago and really up to two years ago, to use our technology, you had to fire it on your desktop, you had to load in the companies you wanted to search, press a button, kind of sit there while it went through and crawled the internet, brought the results back. Then you have to filter the results. Then you have to export it to whatever you're using. So where we had a ton of loyal customers and fans, love the technology, I still get high fives at conferences. It's like, I love the technology. It saves me so much time. Well, now it could be set up by one person, strategically a marketing person, or it could be a uh, strategic person in recruiting. And these technology now runs automated. So you can, let's say you're a recruiter, you have a thousand clients or a thousand companies you want to recruit from. You literally set them up in Salesforce and the, the technology will go out every month or every 14 days or whatever your threshold is, automatically crawl the web and bring back and notify you when you've got new people at the target companies that you are tracking. So it's fully automated. And it doesn't, you don't have to navigate to a record. It drops it right into a lead. And the lead says, new person at company you're tracking via the profiler. So we've come a long way. Yeah, you sure have. And uh, I remember the first time I saw a profiler, you had to be on a Windows computer to use, 
use the software and I'm a Mac guy. And so I was never able to, to really get a, you know, a full taste of what that was like. Um, but you know, it's, uh, it, it's interesting because for the, about the last month I've been using your product that's called capture, which is a, uh, Chrome plugin. Right. Uh, and, and it's really interesting what that uh, product allows you to do. So could you explain Capture for sure. us a little bit? So there was a lull. And you know, when you get into a new ecosystem being Salesforce, we had some, we had some challenges getting, the, getting this huge piece of code through security review. So we had like a six-month period of going back and forth. And, and my investor says, like, hey, Donato, uh, you know, we got to get this damn thing out there. And I'm like... Yeah, I'm trying. Sales, you know, you know, got to give kudos to Salesforce. They give great. They they have a very high bar, probably the highest bar for security. So it's so it's a good thing for the users. So he's like, hey, there's these little Chrome things out there that do. And I'm like, are you kidding? That thing? I could build that in a month. And he's like, oh really? So this is like May of uh, 2015. So. Myself uh, for 2014. Uh, yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a time traveler. Yeah, we're, we're not. We're not. We're not at in May yet. I don't think. No. So, so <laughs> <laughs> myself and one of my engineers, you know, brainstormed and literally in our own time built a prototype. And you know, we had a prototype in a month, and then we realized, like, hey, you know, all these other extensions out there, uh, yeah, they're, they're they're nice GUIs, but they've got no meat. They really can't do uh, uh, a lot of things that we know is possible. So luckily, along the way, as we're building this profiler and we're moving our stuff to the cloud, so we put everything uh, as APIs, which means that not only can we build other apps to use the technology, but we can sell it to everybody out there and let them build their own as well. So we're focusing on the core technology. So Capture, what does it do? Think of you can get data from any site into any product. Now, what does that mean? Well, uh, You've got systems out there that just take data from LinkedIn, you know, and you know a little bit, little maybe that much applause because any first-year computer science student could scrape a page on LinkedIn. Uh, I thought it was pretty lame, and it's like, so guys are making money selling this thing. It only crawls, link, takes data from a page on LinkedIn into Salesforce, <laughs> and I'm like, you know, that's not a big vision. A big vision says that you build a system that can take data from any place, hard code it into my product. So we built a system that is customizable by the entire. So what does that mean? That uh, let's take our old friends at ZoomInfo or data.com or LinkedIn or resumes on job boards or any site you can imagine where there's contact data. Someone, not doesn't have to be us, can build a pattern, anybody. And that, what that means is any site and into any CRM, because both our engine that does the scraping, which we've democratized and made it freely available, as well as our export engine or interfaces allows anybody. So, so in fact, uh, I just talked to my old friend at uh, uh, one of the major applicant tracking systems CEO I've known for 12 years, and he's, oh, I hear about this capture thing. Uh, can you... Can you in can you integrate with us? And I'm like, no, I can't. I, I'm sorry, man. I can't do that. And he's like, what? Come on. It's like, we're, we're big. You know, we're, and I, like, I know, I know, but you know what? You can do it. Here's our interface. You can connect to it and all your users can benefit from Capture. So uh, we've built in Capture a very strong product. It's just getting going now, but we built it as a platform, not just a product. So anybody can connect to it. So if anybody says, can it work with this system? The answer is, of course. There's a lot of buzz out there and there's been a lot of controversy, especially around LinkedIn, which is supposedly this walled garden, right? right? That uh, organizations who go in and scrape data from LinkedIn will soon hear from their lawyers. Right. So how does your system work that it's not really scraping the data off of LinkedIn? Sure. So uh, first off, we have, to de we, have to, we have to look at the definition of scrape. The traditional, uh, the traditional definition of scrape is iterating through multiple pages and in some sort of automated fashion pulling the data. That's a gen in, in the computerese, that's a generally accepted concept of scraping. You're not pulling one page. 
you're going through and you're hammering and you're looking at the whole thing. So what we decide to do is, like I said, make an engine. So for example, when Capture comes out of the box, it can't get data from LinkedIn. It, it doesn't do it. You have to go out to the community, find a pattern, and then load that pattern from someone else, a consultant out there. It's, it's, there's, there's, there's these pattern, uh, pattern repositories out there. So then with that pattern, you can scrape any, uh, actually, you can capture, and correct myself, you can capture any page. I, I think, I think uh, flatly, LinkedIn's acceptable use policy is, is BS, right? They literally say, I can't take a paper and pencil and write down what I see on the screen. Come on, right? It's like, good, <laughs> good luck enforcing that, right? So yeah, I, I, think that, I think that it's so easy to pull a page in an automated fashion from any site that people have to adjust their business model to accommodate for that. If you want to limit the number of page people's pe 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 uh, uh, pages people can view, great, do that. But don't be stupid and say you can't write down a, a thing you say in your page. If somebody's currently on a page in their browser and you're going to say uh, you can't write that down, well, go out and argue with the hundreds of thousands of sales reps and recruiters that are currently doing it now. So right. uh, my approach was like, you know, I don't want problems with, you know, big LinkedIn brother. So I created something which is akin to a compiler, right? I built the engine. If someone writes a program with it, I, I can't control that. And the idea is that, like, like the example, the compiler example, if you're going to go out and sue Microsoft because somebody built a virus with their compiler, no. We built a general purpose tool that anybody can add logic to. That's the idea. One of the topics I've been talking about a lot on this show over the last year is big data. And there's, as, as you know, there's a tremendous amount of hype around big data. And most of that big data is pretty worthless unless you uh, clean it and uh, have some reasonable system of organizing it. So talk to us a little bit about, you know, I mean, this is obviously an area that you've been playing in for uh, many years and know a lot about. So give us an update on what's going on with big data out there on the internet, especially as it relates to recruiting. Sure, so big data, what is the definition first? So uh, I don't think anybody really has an idea. So I'd say that, okay, well, the big data is not the amount of data itself. Big data and what people are alluding to and how they use it is the data mining within a data set that gives you something you didn't know before. So I don't consider big data a big database that you do a query and say, you know, give me people in Seattle. That's not big data. That's a big database. Big data is, I've got so much data, I can tell that there's a trend of people in Seattle, in Seattle registering for a particular site or having a certain skill set or a certain type of job that is trending. So big data is not big database. Big data is the uh, ex extracting of additional information based usually on algorithms from the initial set of data. And I mean, it's, it's brilliant what you can do with it, right? And if anything, we don't have enough data. You know, my, in my example that I use on big data is what if you had an app on your phone and that app a, had a camera that was always on and it could recognize, oh, Donato stopped at Starbucks this morning. Actually, it was a cheap gas station. Got his coffee and uh, he put two of those little creamers in it. Tiny thing. But if that's tied to an application, and that application is a food consumption recognition application, okay, that's one piece. And then you've got another piece that logs that data. Well, 10 years down the road, I come down with some horrible skin condition. Well, then you've got the health data and the monitoring. Well, what if, Peter, I'm sorry to do this to you, but you had those same creamers too. And 
10 years later, you also start having the skin condition. Boom. There's synergies. Food is a huge one. Uh, patterns. Uh, everything. Big data. What, how people sit in an interview. Do they shift to the left? Do they shift to the right? Uh, what do they do when you ask them a, a versus our left brain question? We, we don't even have the imagination yet in general to understand where big data can go. But big data has a lot of privacy issues. That's the biggest thing. If we're getting recorded 24-7 in order to provide this, right, there's, there, right. there's some big concerns. So I think, I think big data and the interesting area of HR, it's not that we, it's not that, okay, people do have the imagination recruiting, right? They're, they're, they want to measure everything, how he walks, how they talk. It, do they get to the interview four minutes early or 15 minutes early? I look at those things personally. I've learned after thousands of interviews. And I know it's kind to let someone go in five minutes if they're not a fit. It's kind. No one says anywhere, HR people out there, that you have to sit through a half an hour of somebody that you know in five minutes is not a candidate. Practice your thank you. I don't think it's going to be it's going to work out for you. And you know maybe give them five minutes of advice on where they could get a position if it's not a fit for you. So wow, big data, big HR issues, right? But, the, but what we can do with it, it's exciting. You look at what, what HireVue is doing now with big data and the algorithms they're building around, and this is the kind of thing you were just talking about, gestures and the facial expressions, being able to predict um, how a candidate will perform on a particular job just by using that kind of big data analysis. Mm -hmm. And you know the, the biggest processor right now we have is right here. That's why experience right. trumps uh, energy, energy and enthusiasm every day because it's experience. You've been through it. You know, oh, I, I saw that guy coming a mile away. He was just like that sociopath that we almost hired. So <laughs> you, you start categorizing things, right? Right. But at some point, right, uh, I'm, I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning. You know, we're going to hit it soon, you and I, Peter, uh, that – we're going to have to start going to the younger people because we're going to be so set in our ways because of the big data that we've absorbed through experience. I, I want to return to a topic that you brought up a, a little while ago, which is security, which obviously is so important now within organizations. Why do you think so many of these big companies are getting hacked? Because <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> Uh -huh. I mean, uh, follow the money. If somebody's making, if somebody's making money on these, uh, uh, which I'm sure they are, it, it's going to happen. So it, it's, it's, it's happening because some nefarious person out there, multiple nefarious people are, are uh, being hacked. So, you know, like, you know, later, later today, uh, it's the only reason I have a jacket on today. I had to do this T-shirt too. But uh, I'm doing a talk for our, our community on Internet safety for children, right? So it all starts there. It all, it all starts with uh, uh, trying to set up a, uh, an environment that protects the young and move, moves along. It's the same thing. Uh, what, pe what, what young job applicants are doing today, they don't realize when they're posting these things. And it's been around for 10 years, you know, putting things on MySpace and, and Facebook. But, uh, you know, education is important. So the security issue, the getting hacked, it's like, it's going to always happen. I just saw something last night that there's some new hacker group out there that has stuff that's so nefarious. It's been around for 10 years and it rewrites the ROM on your computer. So wiping out your entire hard drive and reinstalling everything makes no difference. So the, the message I'm going to tell everybody out there is, you know what? And this is more of a person thing than a technology or, or big data thing. But you know what? Just live your damn life and do things that, that you're proud of, because otherwise, uh, no matter who, you listen to me out there, no matter who you are or what you think you're hiding, uh, someone's going to find it. You know, all those, whatever those late night searches you're on Google, well, you know what? Big data. Do we know that they delete that? No. And 10 years after I'm gone, do I believe that my entire internet search history is going to be public? Absolutely, I do. Now, I'm going to live to a ripe old age of 100 plus, but 
Do I want, do I want my kids seeing uh, activity like that? No, right? So, so you know what? It's if, you, if you're going to be a certain way, be it openly. Because everything out there is not hidden. Everything out there can be uncovered. If you had any idea of what I see in, in just what's available, what you can find, and what other companies that we work with are able to uncover, it's like, you know what? Uh, maybe the kids today who post everything on Facebook and Twitter and all the other things, maybe they're right. It's like, you know what? They can't hide it anyway. So you might as well just be open about it. So let's shift gears a little bit here because I've been doing also a number of things on specifically B2B lead generation, which is an, a, a, a topic that you know a great deal about. So what is working today in B2B lead generation other than webinars? You know, this would be an entire, I, mean, yeah, I, I, I would answer the question and then both my sales team and my marketing team would probably disagree with me. So uh and I, I think the simple answer is that it's, a, it's an approach that you have, to, you have to look at everything. So to, to give you an insight, obviously we have our own technology in order to uh, pull, pull data from, from different sources. But the key thing is looking at all possibilities. So for example, uh, content marketing is a great thing. At Ringlead, we have a uh, shout out to Amanda Nelson who runs content development at Ringlead. Uh, she, we recruited her from Salesforce, right? So great win for us, but she powers our content marketing. So I'll, 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 I'll get on with Skype with her, talk for 15 minutes, and all of a sudden I'm on the Salesforce blog. Yes, it's my words and it's my ideas and stuff, but she wrote it up, she did the, she did the hard work. So content marketing is huge. Being an expert in an area, in a niche area is huge. Uh, making sure, here's a big one in lead generation, whenever you get data, only get it in bite sizes that you can use that month. It's the biggest mistake people make. They go out and they buy 100,000 leads from some big provider out there, and then 11 months later, they're complaining that the data's bad. I'm gonna actually stick up for the data providers and say, uh, you know what? Uh, that's just the nature of things. If I give you people's names today, 100,000 of them, by the end of the year, 25% of them are going to be outdated. So if you don't get to that data, it's your fault. So what does that mean? Generate data in real time as you need it. Just in time lead generation. That's, and that, and it, just that one theory and understanding and applying that will make a huge difference across your entire uh, funnel. From the top of the funnel of identification to the marketing qualified to the sales qualified to the actual prospect that is... Uh, is all screened. That that's really interesting. Uh, and to this to this whole idea of content creation mm -hmm. that you just spoke about, one of the things Ringlead has been doing a lot of are webinars, which yep. work really well. And a topic that seems to be very popular with your audience is cold emails. Yes. Yes. Right. So tell us tell us about cold emails. Well, you know what? Uh, since I'm not a speaker that wrote a book about uh, cold calling is dead. Uh, you know, when, when somebody says, when somebody writes a book and they, something is dead, uh, immediately I got a quadrant and I go, agenda, agenda, right? <laughs> it's like, that's so irresponsible. It's irresponsible to say one thing is, is all you need because you got an agenda. You're selling software that does one certain thing. I mean, we've got the biggest, baddest, badass lead generation system out there, period. But we don't just rely on that. We do content marketing, we do email, we do cold call, we do referrals, we do LinkedIn, we do everything. That's the approach. So when you are faced with cold emails, stand out. It's that simple. It, I, I do a web webinar, a experiment called the email squint test. And it really <laughs> opens people's eyes. Pun intended. And what I do is I show that, I said, okay, everybody, I'm going to show you three screens really quickly, right? And each one is going to have an email on it. But I want you to squint so you can't actually see the text. And when I'm done, I'm going to take a poll. And I want you to tell me which of these three emails was not spam, right? Understand? Okay. So then we do it, and I do the poll. 85% of people get it right. 
85% of people from the structural visual appearance of the email know it's spam. Spam score checkers, like, hey, let's, let's, let's get the marketing group together and check and see if this is spam. Great. And it's got a 1.0 rating. But then the dumb guy in the back room, hi, let me squit. It looks like spam, right? So technology and human intelligence have to be used hand in hand. That's a great example. So if you're going to write an email, have someone say, hey, I want you to squint at this page. Ready? Okay, squinting, go. Does it look like spam? They say yes. Most likely take that email that's like this and bring it down to a sentence or two with a link to something that you want to point out. And please, whoever you are out there who is training on, hi, Donato, I'm following up on the email I sent the other day, blah, 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 90, 90 page email. I ignored your first email because it sucked. What makes you think drawing attention to the sucky email is going to get my attention? It's the worst technique ever. Someone, but but I, I, must, I must assume that someone must be responding to this, or it's like a myth, like Joseph right. Campbell, uh, power of myth. Somebody, some medicine man, recruiter, sales trainer told this sitting up on the mountain one day, and everybody said, oh, okay. And then everybody started doing it. It sucks and gets the worst response rates. And it's usually offshore people. But I see it, I see it occasionally. So that is called the email reference danger. And the problem with it is that when you get to the third email, it's like, Peter, I'm referring to my last email. You may want to reach out because I think companies just like yours are, are you know, just like yours because they did their research, just like yours right. are interested. And then third email, Peter, you're going to miss out on this opportunity. Uh, you, have a, you have a small window, and I sent you two emails before this. Peter, WTF, you're not getting back to me. So do you see what's happening? When people take this approach, it's a natural escalation into uh, – it's, it's a natural escalation in, 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 into the abyss of, of rudeness. And they don't get it. And I get this all the time. I'm like, a, so you know what I'm going to do, Peter? I'm going to write a blog about this. I, I've been wanting to do this for years. Yeah, please do. I, and and <clears throat> would you add a few things to yes. it? I get pitched every single day for things from PR firms that I would never do an interview on. I focus on HR technology, recruiting, talent acquisition, leadership, and innovation. That's my space. It, also, um, Somebody out there who's doing LinkedIn training seems to think it's a good idea for these people to send these requests to connect with the following statement. Since we share several oh. groups, oh yes. my God! Well, I, I had somebody really. I had somebody recently reach out to me, and uh, you know, it was it was a. I mean, you know what? The 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 story has not ended, so I don't know where it's going. But they reached out to us and they said, you know, I've got some I've got some challenging situations in my life right now. Uh, we both have this current connection, right? And somebody I know, I know pretty well. And uh, you know, uh, would you give me a free copy of this piece of software, right? And I, 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 you know, I've had people who have lost spouses in the recruiting industry, and I have, I've done that for years, right? Uh, and I, and I've had some, I got some great fans out there that you know we provided all the support possible. They turned it around. They became a client in the future. So I believe in that. But, you know, when I got this, I said, hey, great. I'm going to, why don't you have this person who we both know well send a mutual intro email? Silence. So, you know, it pains me that someone, and again, I could be totally wrong and they could be out there thinking, but Donato, fine. But, you know what? It's hard to get, it's hard not to get sucked into these things. So if, if I get a trusted referral from this person we both know, snap will have software at their disposal. So uh, it, it's a challenge. And people don't understand, you know, as a CEO, as, as any executive, we get pounded. So I got an idea for you, Peter. Okay. I wrote a blog probably five years ago, and it was called 11 Rules to Sell to Me. And I remember yeah, that. We did an interview yep. about 
that five years ago. And or that saves me so much time. When I get when I get an like when I get something that okay, people, it could be a fit. Like they've got network security software or, or HR monitoring software. I'll send them. I'll, I'll say, please read this. Because what it does is it has them recraft their email, be specific in how it can be a fit for my company or companies like yours. It's like, guess what, buddy? There is no company like mine. So when you tell me that, boy, does that get me going. Well, do me a favor. Send me a link to that, um, to that uh, blog post, and I will uh, link to that on your show page here on Total Picture. You got it. But I will, ri- right. I will write the email danger uh, the email follow-up danger blog, and because this way I can just send it to these people. Hopefully, I'm I'm not pushing people down, and because usually I just ignore it. But this way, I have I have a little impact, a tiny impact on making the ecosystem better for everybody. Well, Donato, thank you very much for speaking with us today. This has really been a fun interview. How can uh, our listeners and viewers uh, connect with you? <laughs> I'm on I'm on LinkedIn. Send me a personalized invite. I ex- I, I accept all connections. Uh, just, just say, just connect to me and don't say anything. It gets ignored. You saw me in the radio, you know, it, it's like every, I'll admit it. Everybody likes their ego stroked. Hey, Donato, great interview. Or Hey, Donato, you're full of crap in your interview. Fine. <laughs> but it shows they took the time. Exactly. Personalization is the initial door opener, not mass quantity. Not because uh, our product is used by companies similar to yours. Right. Hmm. Yeah, right. All right. Well, thank you again for speaking with us here on Total Picture. And uh, we will certainly be in touch. And let's stay connected a little Absolutely, bit Absolutely, my friend. It's been too long. Yes, it has. Thank you.